leads from just off Orwell Lane. Tis the season for a morality tale. In this, a soul consumed with avarice, Simon Jordan, cooks the books to take over an enterprise from his business associate. The despondent owner disappears into despair, leading to the circumstance of Lamont and Margot entering from the stage left after meeting his children. Determined to discover the absent father and bring him back in time for Christmas. Enter the Shadow, who tracks down Jordan and plays the role of past, present, and future in a ghostly allusion to that Dixonian classic. Notable for the fourth and final appearance of Officer Murphy in the series, it was also the first to be transcribed ahead of time, so both live and transcribed broadcasts carried the same episode that Christmas Eve a first for this particular series. A special Christmas gift for the listener from a script by Peter Wright, starring Bill Johnstone and Marjorie Anderson from Christmas Eve, December 24th, 1939. The stockings were hung. Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. The Shadow uses his hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice of the Shadow belongs. Today's story, The Stockings Were Hung. This is a story of Christmas time in a great city. Tonight, with Margot Lane and Lamont Cranston, we look in on the lives of the Grover family. Get out of here. Get out. You'll not get a cent of pay from me, Mr. Grover. Simon Jordan, you know my wife's dead and I have two children. And it's Christmas. I've got get to. Out. Get out before I... It's Christmas time in a great city. As our scene opens, we find Margot and Lamont Coming down on the elevator from Margot's apartment. Well, here's where we get out, Margot. Where now? Over to the club, Lamont, to pick up a Christmas basket of food to deliver. Good. Oh, look, Lamont, it's snowing. What do you think of mm. that? I want to stop the corner and see my friend Spike. Spike? Yes, Spike Grover. He's a newsboy. Yeah, He's trying my paper. Oh. Yeah, this is Spike on the corner. Mm, busy little yeah, man, isn't he? Yeah. I always give him $5 for Christmas. In spite of all you've said about organized charity, giving one isolated newsboy $5. Oh, but Lamont, this is different. Get your papers. I should say it is different. It isn't even Spike. Paper, mister, paper. Uh, yes, the young lady would like a paper to cover her new hat. <laughs> if you can call that Christmas tree ornament a hat. Where's Spike Grover? Ah, uh, Spike's got family trouble. He's a pal of mine, Spike. Here, tells me everything. He knows I can keep a secret. Family trouble? Well, it's very confidential. You see, Spike and his sister Jane... You see, they haven't got any mother. They only got a father. And you see, I don't tell anybody, but Spike's grandfather owned a Grover importing company. Uh, whoa, never... whoa, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> You're way ahead of me. Now, look. Spike's grandfather owned a Grover importing business. And Spike's name is Grover. So Spike and his father should own the Grover importing business. And, well, it seems there's a fellow named Jordan worked for Spike's grandfather. And the way I figure it, this fellow Jordan put the snatch on the whole business. Did what? Lady, you wouldn't understand. I was just telling this gentleman here... As far as I can figure, this old miser named Jordan steals the whole business right out from under Spike's father's nose. So a couple of days ago, Jordan fired Spike's father from his own business, mind you. Ain't that awful? But where is Spike? And where's his father? Brady, if I knew that, I'd tell Spike. Well, where does he live? He lives in the old house down on South and 7th Street. Uh, what's your name, son? They call me Gabby. But you know, I could never figure out why. <laughs> no? <laughs> well, uh, uh, Gabby, uh, here's a Christmas present for you. Oh, thanks. Gee, thanks, mister. Merry Christmas, Gabby. And the same to you, lady. Bye. While you go over to your club and pick up the Christmas basket, Margot, I think I'll go down and see Spike and family. I'll pick you up at the club, Margot. A cab. You want a cab, mister? You want a cab? Yes. 
Uh, take me to South and 7th Street, please. South and 7th Street, yeah, South and 7th. Thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, I want to stop at a pet shop on the way. Do you know a good one nearby? Well, I don't know where that is. There's one. Of... Oh, yeah, I do know where there's one on the next block, that is. Well, that's where we're going, then. <laughs> oh, driver, are you uh, busy tonight? Yeah, yeah, I got to drive this cab. Ain't it awful, ain't it? <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what I... <laughs> now you've got me doing it. Doing what? Uh, hiring the cab for tonight. You mean it? Sure. Gee, Santa Claus. I didn't know you were out them whiskers. <laughs> that's a joke. It is a pet shop, mister. There it is. Well, that's fine. Thanks. Uh, what's your name? Louis. Well, come on, Louis. Let's buy a pup. Buy a pup, huh? Buy a pup, old oh boy. Hey, the red one in the window? Sold, Louis. Sold. Oh, that's a cute pup. That's a cute pup, all right. Uh, how much is the red set of pup in the window? Oh, that's a very fine animal. Uh, $35. Fine. Wrap it up. I... I beg your pardon? Put it in a cardboard carton with some holes in it. We'll take it with us. Very good, sir. Well, now, Louis, you'll take the pup in front, see? It's a surprise for a young lady we'll pick up later. She mustn't know about it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Say, but suppose it's against the bark of wine or something. Well, if she asks what it is, you just tell her a, a box of books. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's smart. That's a... But wait a minute. What kind of books am I going to say if it starts to bark? Oh, that's easy. You just call for sneeze. Believe me, mister, if you didn't want this hack for the evening, I'd tell you it sounds a little screwy to me, I tell you. Hey, here's your dog, sir. Fine animal indeed. Louis, <laughs> <Yes, sir. laughs> uh, <Louie>, sneeze. <laughs> huh? Sneeze. Oh. Ah, shoot. Is that right? Thanks. Great, Louis, great. Take the box of books now. We're off to South and Seventh Street. <laughs> Brother would be very mad if I didn't make these cookies just perfect for Daddy. Let me see. Here it is. Mother's recipe for Christmas cookies. One and a quarter cups of flour. I've got that. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Maybe nobody would notice if there's no vanilla in them. One third cup of sugar. One egg. And one half cup of butter. One half cup of butter. I haven't even got half of a half a cup of butter. <sighs> oh, I wanted so much to surprise Daddy. <laughs> well, that's no way to feel on Christmas Eve. What's the matter, Jamie? I haven't got hardly any butter. Well, we'll take care of that in a minute, Jamie. But I came here looking for your brother Kingsley. But I don't know where my brother is because he's looking for my father. And I don't know where my father is. <laughs> Daddy hasn't been home for two whole days. No, easy, Jamie. Well, Kingsley says Daddy will be home for Christmas. I'm sure he will. But now Kingsley's gone. I, I haven't any butter and Mother always makes such good Christmas cookies. Well, now look, Jamie. I think this will give you all the butter you want and anything else you might need for your Christmas cookies. Oh, it's five dollars. You can't expect me to find your father in Kingsley if you don't have Christmas cookies ready for them when they come home. Will you really bring them home? I'll try, Jeannie. I'll try. Hey, hey, is this this where we picked the young lady up? Yes, Louie. And don't forget... That's a box of books you have in front and not a dog. And don't forget, if he barks, you sneeze. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, there's Miss Lane now. Oh, Margot. Been waiting long? Oh, no, no, Lamont. Whew, I just piled the snow on my best hat so I look like the spirit of Christmas. <laughs> oh, it's good, sir. Did you deliver your last basket? Uh, yes. What's that package you have in front, driver? Oh, I got it. <laughs> yes, a box of books. I got a box of books. Oh, Oh, I thought you'd never get here. The South and 7th Street, Louie. Uh, that's Spike's house, Margo. Uh, you wait here, Louie. Yeah, sure, boss. Sure, sure. Uh, Margo, this is Spike's house. Let's go, Let's go in and see Jamie. Oh, huh? good. I want to meet her. Come on, Look, there's two boys are fighting. And that smaller boy is Spike. It is. Hey, you youngsters. Look all that tree. It's mine. Stop picking on you, big bully. Oh, scram. See, Miss Lane, I found this tree. No, kid, Mark. Come on, you young hoodlums. Hey, now, wait a minute. One at a time. I saw it in the gutter. Listen, young man. 
I suggest that you run along and let Spike have his tree. Who's going to make me? Why, you young rat scat. Oh, Lamont, remember, peace on earth. I'll get you, Spike, when you haven't got your gang with you. <laughs> what a piece of the society column. The well-known club man, Lamont Cranston, seen brawling. Ow! <laughs> Why, that hit me with a snowball. And the muggle. Peace on earth. Well, if you were half a man, you'd do something about it. Never let it be said. Well, here, you're not going to throw a snowball at him. It wouldn't look well if I shot him, would it? Boy, what a way out! Hey, who do you think you are, Lefty Gomez or something? I'll get you, Spike. <laughs> Mister, and it isn't even a good Christmas tree. Oh, Spike, it's a beautiful tree. It hasn't got many needles, but gee, you, you got to have a Christmas tree when you got a girl in the house. You're right, Kingsley. Kingsley, have you been talking to my sister? Yes. Nothing's happened to my dad, you haven't? Why, of course not. We know your dad's missing, so we just came down to help. Have you any idea where your father is, Spike? Oh, gee, He'll show up. Uh, have you been to the place where he works? I mean, where he used to work. That old skinflint Mr. Jordan won't let him work there anymore. I see. Now, have you asked the police for help? Well, that's just the trouble, Mr. Crasson. I can't. Why not, Spike? Oh, it's kind of private. I... Well, here, you must tell us so we won't be able to help you. Oh, well, uh, all right. See, I went there yesterday, and Mr. Jordan said he hadn't seen Dad, and when he did, he was going to have him thrown in jail. What? Yeah, Mr. Jordan said my dad did something to the books or something, and that he was a, a thief. My dad wouldn't do anything like that. I'm sure he wouldn't, Spike. Bet he wouldn't, especially because that business really belongs to him, and it's supposed to belong to me someday when I get big. If anybody's a thief, it's that old skin friend, Mr. Jordan. Now, look, Spike. The first thing we've got to do is to find your father. Yeah. The best thing to do is to get the police to help us. Oh, but maybe they'll arrest him. But you and I both know that your dad didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that's right. Maybe they can find him, huh? Maybe they can find him. I'm sure they can. You tell me what he looks like. Then you and Miss Lane go in the house, and I'll go to police headquarters. <laughs> Sergeant Murphy. Well, well, season's great, Mr. Mr. Cranston. Same to you. Uh, Sergeant uh, Kingsley Grover Sr. has been missing for two days. Uh, tell me what he looks like and we'll start looking. His son Spike told me that he was 5 feet 10, weighed about 165, was wearing brown overalls. Calling all cars, calling all cars, missing since last Friday. Kingsley Grover Sr., right, 5 feet Harbor Patrol. This is headquarters. We're looking for Kingsley Grover Sr. Height five feet ten. Wait. Billy Mog. Hello, cheerful. Headquarters, caller. Merry Christmas. Have you got a stiff on ice about five feet ten? Wait. Did you find out anything about Spike's old man at police headquarters? No, not yet. Miss Lane's still in the house. Yeah, yeah, she's there with Spike and his sister. Say, the dog's all right. <laughs> I didn't have to sneeze or nothing. He was so quiet, I thought he was froze or something. So I put my hand inside the box. You know what happened? No. He bit my finger. <laughs> He's a card, all right. He's a card. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Louie. I'm going in the house. Okay, boss, okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. gone a long time, Mr. Cranston. The police find him? They'll get him soon, Spike. Don't be impatient now. No, I won't be impatient. Say, would it be bad if you and Miss Lane went into the other room for a minute? I want to talk to my sister. Do you mind? No, of course not, Spike. Come on with me, Lamar. Oh, Remember be a second. Take your time, Spike. Look at Jamie. We'll find him in time for Christmas. <laughs> And still, the search for Spike's father goes on. The machine of the police looking, looking everywhere. Hours pass, and no word. Now we find Kingsley going up to old Mr. Jordan's office. Mr. Jordan! Who is it? Oh, oh it's you, is it? Get out of here. Please tell me where my father is. I don't know where that thief and father of yours is. If I did... He's not a thief. If anybody's a thief, you are. You shut your lying, dirty mouth. You stole my father's business. He should be here, not you. I'll flash you within an inch of your life, you little cut of snipe. Please don't hit me with that cane again, please. Uh, you don't like that, please. Please. And that. Oh, please stop it. Come on, get out. Get out. <laughs> What's the matter? Uh, Kingsley, you're hurt. You poor 
kid. How did you get that red weld across your cheek? Mr. Jordan hit me with his cane. Oh, you poor child. Come here, I'll wash it out. Mm. Now we have to plan what we're going to do. Yes. Have you any suggestions, Spike? Only one, Mr. Cranston. What's that? Well, it sounds, it sounds kind of silly, maybe even to try it, but you see, Dad and me, I mean, Dad and I, well, we always used to walk up the avenue on Christmas Eve. Oh, it sings a little, doesn't oh, it? It's all right. Well, anyway, we'd look in the store windows and we'd see what we'd buy for ourselves and Jamie and Mother when she was alive. We had all the money we wanted. I thought I'd walk up the avenue tonight and... Well, I guess it sounds kind of silly, but I, I would like to. That's a wonderful idea, Kingsley. And Margot. Yes, I'm on. Why don't you go along and take a pencil and paper and write down all the things Spike would like for himself and his sister? We never did that. No? Yeah. Well, just think what fun you'd have... Take talking it over with Jamie afterwards if you had a list. Gee, that's hard. Let's go. Wait, you know, we might even run into Dad. Why, well, sure you might. Uh, aren't you coming with us, Mr. Cranston? Well, yes, of course. I, I'll join you on the avenue. But uh, first, I want to get to the police station again and check up. Oh, Jamie. Yes, Kingsley? You better stay here and watch those cookies don't burn again. All right. I'll be with you in a little while. <laughs> myself a Christmas present of a new latch for the door. That Grover Brack must have left it open. He's too smart, that boy. And uh, you don't have to worry about any Grovers ever again, Simon Jordan. <laughs> Simon Jordan. Uh, that's going to look fine in new gilt letters on the door. Instead of Grover's important company. Uh, you're pretty slick, Simon Jordan. <laughs> These books are fixed so cleverly that even the Supreme Court couldn't tell that Simon Jordan didn't own this company. <laughs> hey. hey, what was that? Who said that? No one said anything, Simon Jordan. I was just enjoying your joke with you. Now, where are you? I can hear your voice. Of course you can hear my voice, Simon Jordan. But you can't see me. I'm in the shadows. The shadows of your mind. Go away. Go away from me. I thought you might be lonely. Oh, no, I'm not going on. Go away. I came to ask you about the Grovers. Hey, What do you know about the Grovers? Enough, Simon Jordan. Enough to know that your altered books would not fool the Supreme Court. Hey, You're... You're not a spirit, are you? In a sense, yes. I try to represent the spirit of honesty and justice. And when Simon Jordan beats a child with his cane, steals from the father of that child like a low, sneaking thief, then I must talk to Simon Jordan. I am not a thief. No. I should not disgrace thieves by calling you one of them. Hey. You're a man too mean to be a thief, Jordan. Yeah. What do you want from this world? None of your business what I want. I'll tell you. You want money. Nothing but money. Yeah. I feel sorry for you, Simon. Oh. I'm going to go now. But I want to leave one thought with you. Eh? You're an old man. You don't have much longer to live. What? All your life's work is your money. It's rather an empty victory, isn't it? You're alone in the world. Your money doesn't do anyone any good, Simon Jordan. Eh? But you can rest easy in your shriveled soul because the growers will be taken care of. Eh? The shadow will take care of them. The shadow? news yet, Spike. But they've got a couple of leads that might amount to something. That's yes, good. Are you pretty near the end of your Christmas Eve walk, Spike? We've got one more stop. Pop and me always stopped in here at the cathedral, you know, just to get out of the cold for a minute. You don't have to be afraid. They'll let you in. If you take it, they will, Spike. Up these steps. Come on, I didn't know there were as many windows in town. I'm dead. I've got a list of presents as long as... Oh, there's your arm. Oh, what, Miss Lane? I hope you've got a preferred list. Oh, I have. Here, in here. Why, this door is heavy. Oh. We can stand 
stop hearing it. All right, Kai. Look, Lamont, that poor man over in the corner. Yes. Do you remember your name, sir? Gee, there's something wrong with him. My name? You must try to remember. Truck. Skidding. Hit me. Uh... Oh. Why did you come to the cathedral tonight? It's uh, Christmas Eve. Always come here. Who is we? I... I can't remember. packages with you? Did she leave some packages? Did she leave some? She dumped them in the back of the hack and went to the kids. He, uh, Spike, I mean, was talking all the way down about your father's old man. Is that the kid's old man with you? Yes, he's in pretty good shape now. Oh, gee, that's the nuts. That's what me is. Now, Louie, don't forget to bring in those packages when I call you. All right, now, Mr. Grover. Just lean on me. You're still a little bit shaky. Uh, I know it. Now, watch the stamp. I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, you're fine now. All right. You go first. Merry Christmas, children. Daddy! Oh! Uh, always the lady of the house. Oh, it's just wonderful now that you're here. Oh, oh Daddy. And I'll make Christmas cookies, too. Fine, fine. And how about you, young man? How have you been behaving? I've been getting along all right. Hey, where did you get that nasty welt across your cheek? You haven't been in a fight, have you, son? Oh, I'll go. Oh, no, sir. It was only an accident. Oh, Mr. Mr. Jordan, what are you doing here? I, uh... I came to speak on a matter of business. I don't believe this is the occasion for a business discussion. Oh, I think it is, Mr. Grover. In going over the books tonight, I found that a great and terrible mistake has been made. Huh? The Grover Importing Company has been making more money than I thought. And over half of it is rightfully yours as partner in the company. Partner? Yes, part owner. And I hope you will find it within your heart to forget any misunderstandings we may have had and... That you will take over the responsibilities of partnership immediately. Yes. Yes, that's all I've got to say. Good night, and uh, 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 Merry Christmas to you all. Oh, how can such an awful old man say such beautiful things? Well, we haven't time to talk about whether he's awful or not. We have things to do. Louie! Well, you don't have to yell. You don't have to yell. I'm right here. I'm right here. Uh, I got all the stuff right with me. Good. Bring it right in. Look, look, Are they for us? Quiet, Jenny. Of course they're not. But they are, Kingsley. Oh, oh don't kid me, Mr. Cranston. You're not getting fired. Oh, I don't know how I can ever repay you for what you, Miss Lane, and Mr. Cranston have done tonight. We have been more than repaid, I assure you. Uh, Louis, don't, don't, don't bring that in here. I didn't tell you I wanted you to bring oh, that in. With my own idea. And I'm not even going to have to sneeze. Well, <laughs> Oh, I'm dry. Oh, Lamont, you're a darling. Did you get that puppy? Well, uh, well, yes. Gee, is that for us, too? Why, all right, of course, Spike. Mr. Cranston got that for you as a surprise. Margot, hear ye, hear ye. It's about time for all three of you, and that means you, too, Mr. Grover, to sit down and open some packages. We've got to go. You ready, Margot? Uh, where's Louie? He went outside. Merry Christmas to you all, and to you all, good night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now, Margot, earlier tonight, we disagreed on our interpretation of charity. <laughs> Silly, wasn't it? I know what you mean, Lamar. There should never be a thing called charity. There should never have been the necessity to create the word. In this short span we call our lives, as each man would only realize that every other man has dreams and hopes. This world wouldn't be a topsy-turvy place. Then peace on earth would be a fact goodwill would be for every man. Oh! <laughs> Is that you, Louis? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Cranston. Have you got a call? Uh-uh. A box of books. box of books? But you brought that inside. Yeah, yeah, but this is another one. Another one? Yeah, another one. It's for you, Miss Lane. You mean it's another puppy? Yeah, it's my own idea. You see, when I went by the pet shop, and, and the other pup's brother was in the window, so I went in and I pet him on the head. You know what he done, Mr. Cranston? No. He bit my finger. Oh, he's a card. So, so I had to go and get him from Miss Lane. And I charged him to you, I did. 
Lamont. Yes, Margo? I'd like to say something. Well, certainly. What do you want to say? Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you, Margo and Lamont. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is on sale at your local newsstand.